All right, welcome to my little episode here. We're gonna start talking about an e-bike conversion on a recumbent. And I wanna go ahead and show you a couple bikes I have in my fleet and why ultimately uh, they probably will never be electrified. The first one is this one. This is my, this is called a Tour Easy. And I can make a video at some point about the history of the bikes and why I have them and all that, but uh, suffice to say, this bike here was designed uh, from old bicycle parts that you, you cut up old part, bicycles and you weld them back together. Eventually there was a, an aluminum version and then there was a, a, a titanium version. Uh, the reason I, I wouldn't build this out to be an e-bike, though you certainly could, but what I was looking at is the best candidate, and I don't think this is it. Um, you have a 700 wheel on the back, which, you know, is not um, a lightweight racing wheel. Uh, has quite a few spokes, but still, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's not designed to take the kind of power that you can put down with an electric motor. Not that any bicycle is, but there's better candidates. Uh, then you have this one. This is a, I believe, third generation Rans Rocket. And if you look at the frame, and that frame is steel. So that bike is heavier than you would think it would be. And definitely rugged enough to take a, uh, a, a mid-drive um, e-assist, which we'll talk about what I mean by that. And if you look down here, the wheels are, they're uh, 406s, 20 inch front and back, lots of spokes. So I don't think you would have any problem putting it on here. But you have your feet up there, and then to get them down and to really handle that with something unexpected, um, probably not the easiest candidate. I, I will tell you this, I looked at all the recumbent bikes out there, and really there was only one candidate. And let's guess this guy right here. Uh, there are bikes out there in the recumbent world that have smaller wheels and they feel like a toy um, the, the, the rockets one of the few that can run a 20 inch on the back and not be feel like a toy but the other ones they feel like a toy and then you get something like like that or you get something like that and not, not that they're hard to ride that one can be but but that one is, is not hard to ride but there is a learning curve and the the one and only bike I know of this recumbent that has capability and yet is not um, is is not hard to ride. There's no learning curve. My wife got on this first time and rode it away, or not this one, but she's had, I think she's on her third Easy Sport. So this is what I would get. This is a Sun Easy Sport, or if you buy them new nowadays, they're called a Sun Seeker Easy Sport. They're like 1800 bucks now, new, but you can buy a used one for pennies and I'm not going to profess a, a price uh, I, I wouldn't begin to do that the area and the condition of the bike and everything I will tell you this I got this one for a song uh, I bought its twin and this together as a pair for under $200 and this one was like brand new I don't think it was written maybe around the block once by the wife and she went yeah that was enjoyable and that was that Ed. but if you notice it's still recumbent it doesn't lean you back quite as far, and it, your feet can be on the floor, on the ground in a hurry if you need to stop. So it's very nice. Now, let's talk about the e-assist kit. E-assist kits, they have hub drives where you can get a hub motor put on the back. But if you're doing it yourself, honestly, the easiest way to go, and I didn't know this, again, learning, mid-drive is really easy. Um, there's a million videos on YouTube of how to take apart a bottom bracket and then they have a way of taking apart the bottom bracket or they have videos the company uh, I want to talk about the company for a moment this is Bafang there's makes out there that are junk there's makes out there that cater to the OEM Bafang is probably one of one that does both they, uh, they have some OEM presence. You go buy a bicycle, six, $8,000, buy a trike for, for that much or more, and it'll have a Bafang drivetrain on it. And yet at the same time, they sell a kit like this that is relatively affordable, um, 
backed by a good warranty and everything's top quality uh, everything and, and the installation couldn't have been easier the one measurement you have to take into account I was worried about this bar here and that really is of no concern it, it has plenty of clearance um, is the width of your bottom bracket um, the narrowest bottom bracket is like a 68 to 73 millimeter. That's this one. And really, like I say, I'm not going to go through the process. Plenty of videos out there. But good grief, you just, you know, you, you pull your crank arm off. Pull, you know, and, and pull your crank arms off. Get them off there. Unscrew this. Slide your other bottom bracket off, all the crank and everything. You got to remove your, your, um, you remove your top, your uh, derailleur and then you put your single chain ring on. They've got different sizes of chain rings. Eh, you know, I, I run what came with it, it's fine. Uh, you also get to select what size battery you want. Um, I, this one is a 17 and a half amp per hour, uh, capable of 840 watts. This is a thousand watt uh, bike. This has an 840 watt battery because it's 48 volts. But believe me, that's plenty and we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, as far as fastening it to the frame, I thought it was going to be hard. It comes, if you look at that metal piece, that metal piece down there is being held on by those radiator clamps, okay? And then, there you go, you can see it. And, and, and then it basically just screws onto that. Um, that battery typically, with its, um, its little plate underneath there, is designed to be put on a bottle cage on a mountain bike. This one, I just spun it around. It is, I've, I've been told more than once it's installed backwards. I'm like, well, the, the cable's right here and the motor's right here, so that's what you gotta do. One concern with this particular kit, well, any kit really, is uh, I needed an extension cable for the speed sensor, which is right there, okay? It just helps to have a speed sensor on it. I'm also going to put a gear sensor in it. The gear change sensor it senses when the cable moves uh, when you're shifting, and it will uh, reduce power so you're not dumping all your power to the to the chain when you shift. Uh, anyway, the cable I had to go all the way to China for that one, and I can certainly provide the name of the company, but you know that that can change. Uh, they might be available in the States next week. But at any rate, I ordered two cables and I only needed one. There's the connector. So, you install the kit. There's your battery plug. Um, if you've ever come in contact with a mobility scooter, this charging plug is going to look um, pretty, pretty common. It's, it is. It's just the old, old time, you know, it's just old plug off of a off of a mobility scooter and then there's a on off switch to tell you the battery power you know and then there's a on off switch for the battery here i'm going to turn that on um it's typical you can't really tell what's on and what's off so i put a dot where on off is another option that you have when you when you run these um you can get sensors for your oem brake handles or you can, you can just install the ones that come with the kit. And what these are for is when it senses you hit the brakes, it shuts the motor off. Probably a pretty good idea. So you put two of those on, and then you have this, which is actually a throttle. They call them e-assist. We'll get to that in a minute. But at any rate, turn this on, select the level of assist that you want, you for a second there sorry uh, you can select the level of assist that you want um, the display units are different you can order any any number of display units for this kit and there's a lot of compatibility like you could take this display unit put it on any kit it doesn't have to be a buffet um, it's whatever you want to do I want to talk about the one mistake that I did make a happy accident if you will and that is that system, that, that unit right there, um, to give you a, a, to give you an idea, the system that you buy from Bachetta on their OEM Pronto line, 
250 watts and about 95 pounds of, uh, of torque, or 95 uh, newton meters, my fault. This has 1,000 watts and 160 pounds or newton meters of torque. Sorry, I'm stuck in car mode. So when you're talking about literally four times as much power as an OEM unit, um, you can get lost pretty quick. If you put this thing on top level and start to pedal, the bike just takes off. And that's where the throttle comes in. You can just dial it on an assist level. And if you don't feel like pedaling, you can just do this. Um, how legal is that? Uh, I'm not prepared to have that discussion <laughs> at all. Uh, modifications to the bike, specifically for e-assist. Number one, you want e-bike rated tires. The marathons that came on, that you can put on here, for, uh, which are inch and a half, uh, are e-bike rated. But I wanted something that rode nice, and I put a set of big apples on it. Two inch big apples and two inch Planet Bike fenders. That's one mod, uh, is the tires. The second mod is I had to cut the fender to clear the chain. And if that chain looks a little different, my apology, the fly just tried to get my eye. This is a, I didn't keep the box, but this is a KMC E-rated chain. And on this bike, since it's a nine speed, it's an E9. Uh, so it's a, KM, a KMC, it's a KMC E9 chain. It's designed to take the extra power and the extra abuse of, a, of an ESS drivetrain. Um, we have it set right now to where, just riding around town, level one um, does a little bit more than overcome the weight of the of, of the kit and you feel like you're pedaling but it's only using five percent of, of the drivetrain's available power and uh, I, I have the biggest hill in our area is ironically lots of flat road lots of flat trail around here but the biggest hill in our area is just down the road here and I took this and on level three throttle only it walked right up the hill so pretty sweet ride um, you still shift and it takes common sense you don't put this thing in ninth gear come to a stop and then give it full throttle because you're just going to beat the heck out of the drivetrain so you want to you want to shift as if you're pedaling and and it's it's really a good kit for it but this it's really a good kit for providing assistance this one here is overkill if I were to install it again, I wouldn't have bought, I probably would have went half this size and got a 500, which would have been plenty. But there's a, there is, like I said, a happy accident. Um, the e-bike people will tell you, you're better off buying an extremely large unit and running it at limited power because the motor and the gearing and everything inside that unit is so overbuilt for the thousand watts that if you're only dumping 200 to it or less, not only does it, is it less of use, but it uses a lot less power. That motor there at being a thousand watt rated will generate 200 watts of power more efficiently than a, than a 250 watt motor would. What's the drawback then? Why don't you just get the bigger one? Number one, expense. And number two, weight now, i don't give a damn about weight to be honest about it because this thing's a pig anyway right that bike by itself is 38 pounds but that motor weighs twice as much as a uh, as a 250 maybe even over twice as much but i don't care and the cost i can tell you the system itself right down to the extension cable i had to put on it display unit any sort of installation equipment, $1,202 shipped to my door. Now, add the chain in, add the fenders in, add the tires in, and you're, you're right around $1,400, $1,500. Uh, then you gotta figure in a bike, which 
if you work it right, you're not going to have much in a bike. You can buy a really serviceable, easy sport. And and for, you know, like I say, not a lot of money. I would, if if possible, you know, if you get a, if you get a deal on a nice CX, that's fine. I probably, after seeing them both, I probably would hold out for an AX if I could. The wheels are better and the, um, the frame is better. It just, it just seems like it's a higher quality unit and the components are better. So anyway, that's all I got. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. Uh, I will rewatch this video, see how boring it is. It's very atrocious, I'm sure. Uh, again, if you have any questions about anything, I have a Tori ZLE there. I've posted before about my seat hack uh, for that that preserves your carbon fiber pan if you haven't busted it up yet. This is a rocket. Um, that bike has a story, a wonderful story. I think I've told that one online. Uh, if you want to know anything about these bikes, if I don't know it, go out to Recumbent Riders. Rands has a group. The Recumbent Two Wheelers have a group. There's guys out there, the moderator of that group. If he doesn't know it, it's probably not to be known. So anyway, uh, I appreciate the time and I hope that this does somebody some good.